Hello, my name is Jussi Enkovara. This is first part of a gentle introduction to parallel programming with MPI. Come and learn parallel computing with me. In parallel computing, a computational problem is divided into smaller problems which are executed simultaneously, that is, at the same time in different processing units. With the processing units of today, parallel computing is a must. Since CPU clock frequencies are no longer increasing, speed up is obtained by using multiple cores, and that requires parallel programming. Moreover, parallel computing allows applications to use more memory, enables the application of old models to new length and time scales, leads to solution of grand challenges and new science. Not to mention the fact that more precise models lead not only to new science, but better science. So why parallel computing? Because it allows you to do bigger science, better science and make it faster. Parallelism means that some or all parts of a problem can be solved or executed simultaneously. We can distinguish between different forms of parallelism. In data parallelism, each parallel execution unit is operating with its own share of data, but all are doing the same operations on that data. In task parallelism, each processing unit carries out a different set of operations on the data. In the best case scenario, the two can be combined. There are some parallel programming concepts I would like to introduce at this point. It is necessary to understand that adding more and more processing units to a program's disposal doesn't automatically lead into a decrease in wall clock time. The observed trend in the runtime of parallel application when the number of cores is increased is referred to as parallel scaling. When the input data is kept the same, but the number of cores is increased, we refer to the decrease in execution time as strong scaling. If we double the amount of data each time the number of processing units is doubled, we refer to the behavior of execution time as weak scaling. For a perfectly scaling application, the wall clock time halves each time the number of processing units is doubled, or the wall clock time remains constant when doubling both the problem size and the number of processing units. Real-world applications don't generally scale perfectly for any number of cores. The main reasons for a program not to scale are the following. There are usually some parts of a parallel program that are executed serially, that is, only by a single processing unit. More time spent on shut score parts, the earlier the code will stop scaling. In other words, the serial parts of the code become a scalable bottleneck sooner or later. This observation is referred to as the Amdahl's law. If the amount of data or the amount of work to be done on that data varies from one processing unit to another, this will lead to imbalances in the code. A critical measure for a parallel program is the balance of work between the tasks, that is, the load balance. When comparing a parallel program to a program that does the same but in a single processing unit, there is always a need for supervising the parallel execution of a program, for instance, synchronization or communication between different execution units. The time spent in these extra actions is referred to as parallel overhead. When programming for supercomputers, we need to have an understanding of the architecture. Traditionally, there are two main classes of supercomputers shared memory and distributed memory. In a shared memory machine, each processing unit is able to access a large pool of memory, which is shared with all of the other processing units in the system. In a distributed memory machine, each processing unit has its own dedicated local memory, and accessing the memory of another processing unit requires communication. In the supercomputers of today, these categories are in practice combined, Processing unit typically forms a shared memory node with a few other processing units and multiple nodes together form a distributed memory architecture. There are several programming models for parallel computing. First, message passing 
can be used both in distributed memory and shared memory computers. In this case, data is passed from one processing unit to another by an exchange of messages. This programming model can result in very good parallel scalability, but programming can be complex. Second, threading with, for example, bthreads or OpenMP is considered simple, but it can be used only in shared memory computers and often suffers from limited parallel scalability due to limitations of memory architecture. The best of both worlds approach is often referred to as hybrid programming, where threading is used inside a node and a message passing between the nodes. Furthermore, there is a new family of parallel programming models emerging, known as Partition Global Ladder Space or PCAS languages, which are designed to provide the programmer with the conceptually simple but still highly scalable programming model. In this tutorial, we are going to concentrate solely on parallel programming with the message passing interface, or MPI. The second part of the tutorial introduces us to our first program in MPI. The following parts present the most important features of MPI. By watching this through and doing the related exercises, you should obtain an intermediate level of skill in MPI. Now, it is a time to take a look at the first set of exercises.